it's this movie is like what's a good analogy it's like taking your your family to a water park not a great water park maybe soak city it it could be fun there's spouts of fun and you know everyone has an enjoyable enough time but you try to put it it goes out of your mind it's not like sitting in a a, a nice pool a nice lazy river that's a dumb analogy i'm gonna cut that out that's a pretty bad analogy yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. or i might I, I, I might start it start the episode with it i'm more self-aware than this movie than know that that was bad as analogies go that was pretty <laughs> awful. <laughs> oh, Somebody out man. there got it. One of one of our three listeners was like, "Yeah." No. In a world of bad movies, two follically challenged men will stop at nothing to share their opinions of them. Their wives are tired of listening, but are you? This isn't the podcast you deserve, but it's the one you need. Prepare yourself for bald guys and bad movies. Welcome, welcome to episode 10 of Bald Guys and Bad Movies. This is very exciting. Dun, da, da, dun. We made it to 10 episodes. That's 10 weeks, Mike, right? You, you, you're better at math than I, at least in the, in the context of this statement i'm saying okay what how many hours would that be that would be uh i think that's about because the first episode was about an hour the rest are around 30 minutes i'd say it's about five and a half hours if you listen to five and a half hours of two assholes talking about bullshit and you still want more then god bless you yeah and thank you you're definitely our <laughs> demographic <laughs> and uh and you're not married to us uh, by yeah. law. You, there's no legal binding document that would force you to do it. So that's great. Yep. This week we are reviewing Doctor Strange. And the Multiverse of Madness. So do we want to do like we do sure. most times? Yeah. Let's, well, let's yeah. not spoilery. Yeah. Should we see it or not? Or Of course. I okay. mean, look, if if you've seen every, you know, if you've seen the million other Marvel movies... Yeah, you got to go see this one. I mean, there's no two ways about it, you know? Like, you got to see it. But I will add this. If you have not seen WandaVision, at least, you're going to be utterly fucking confused. Because... Oh, yeah. You got to see WandaVision. You got to see WandaVision. I saw, like, the first trailer for this and Mm -hmm. didn't really explore. I knew she was a part of it. Right. That she was probably going to be a villain. But I didn't know to what extent. Well, now, like you're, now you're getting into spoilers, bro. Because I had no idea she was going to be a villain. So let's 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 ixnay on the Illinve situation. Well, okay, okay what well, do you recommend? Yes, I I recommend seeing it. I mean, okay. I enjoyed it. I I you know, there's a lot of hate on the internet. Like it has like the second worst Marvel score, which I mean, that's I don't insane. know, man. Like that's that that's is insane crazy. to me. I mean, that is crazy. I mean, the other it's not, one... It's not, it's not the best. Yeah, right. It's not but the what's best the, Marvel movie, but... I mean, yeah, Thor 2, I'm pretty sure, is the one with the lowest score. It must be the one with the lowest score, in my opinion, because Thor 2 is absolute, utter dog shit. But yeah, I enjoyed it, and I it was, it was not what I expected it to be, and it was pretty cool, I thought, you know? I enjoyed it. Let me just say this. If you like Sam Raimi, and if you like classic Sam Raimi, like Evil Dead... Uh, or even more more recently, Drag Me to Hell. Right. This is that Sam Raimi. Yeah. This is the horror director Sam Raimi. This isn't the simple plan, even to a degree, Spider-Man. I mean, yeah. he, was, he was more restrained than Spider-Man. Even, He's right? very restrained in Spider-Man. Yeah. This one, I think he fully embraced the weirdness mm-hmm. in the best possible way. So as a Sam Raimi fan, you have to see it. And is it just a general, if you want just a general fun popcorn movie? Yeah. Um, it's fun. It is. It's, it's it. fun like to it's, watch. Especially it's not if the you, best Marvel movie, but it's not definitely if, not the worst. And if you and, and if you're like a, a Marvel fan, you know what I mean? Not like a super crazy insane monster fan, right? But if you're just like a, a casual fan, you watch the 
the X Men cartoon and stuff. You watched, you know, you you've known about you know all these other stuff going on, like you know all the other comic books yeah, along with spoiler, it. Spoiler, yeah, yeah, yeah. you gotta edit that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, you fucking talking about me, dude? What the fuck? Now you're getting me into the spoilers. Yeah, I know. Jesus Christ, my so, shit was in the trailer at least. Like you're just giving away candy. Well, it wasn't. It. I mean, she was in the trailer, but you didn't know she was a villain. Well, Either she way, had that. She, she had that line like, right. That's just not fair. Right. Like that. Yeah, so, yeah, so, so, so anyways, edit that out. Okay. Don't, don't put the spoilers. Or, or not. In. Come on. Don't just get the God to edit the fucking spoilers out. God damn. I am Domarmu. <laughs> I have control over your fate. Well, either way, if you're, if you're a casual Marvel fan, you know, you pay attention to, you know, Marvel properties, you, you're, you're going to dig it. You're going to dig it. So let's get into the spoilery. Let's get just dig into this this uh, feast of a film. Okay. I read a Sam Raimi interview. He had, it was an excellent interview on Rolling Stone. He rarely gives interviews. And this was a detailed one. It talked about Doctor Strange. and I have no you know, idea what he looks like, actually, now that I think about it. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> Did I tell you my Sam Raimi story? No, no. I was an extra in Spider-Man, the first Spider-Man. Were, I was in... Really? Yeah. I was... Well, you, you wouldn't be able to see me. I was in the crowd. Basically, they... They had this open cast call. You wouldn't get pay, right? But you would be fed for the day. Sure. And I think we did it for two Where days. Where was it? This was on, I think, on the Sony lot. The wrestling match with Macho Man. So I saw that whole oh. fucking thing get filmed, dude. That's cool. Bruce Campbell was on set. I harassed him for. I did the unthinkable. I brought like a little Evil Dead book that wasn't even like officially commissioned by them, right? And Campbell was kind of. I don't want to say dickish, but I can understand. He's literally, he's in his outfit and I'm leaning over the the, the little balcony thing where we, the, st- the stand. <laughs> Mr. Campbell, <laughs> can you please sign this? And he gives me a little like this motherfucker. And then he did it. He signed it. Well, that's cool. And the balls I had, Mike, listen to the balls I had oh, as, a, as a youngin, or early 20 something. Lunch break. And I see fucking Sam Raimi. Walk, because he's he wears like a little suit and mm-hmm. sometimes a little hat. It's like a throwback to a '40s director. Walks out, and I'm like, "This is my chance. I could get Sam Raimi to sign this too." And I never forget. There's one of these extras. I think he was a paid extra. He saw what I was doing. He was like, he like tapping the shoulder. No, no, no. Don't do that. Don't do that. I'm like, the fuck out of here, man. <laughs> like it. It pissed me off. He's he's probably in the right, right? I'm bothering this director, but I go over and I said, Mr. Raimi, Mr. Raimi. He turns around, gives me a smile. I'm like, could you sign my book, please? He's like, oh, sure. I, what do you want me to sign? You could sign, stop bothering me, you asshole, if you want. <laughs> He's like, ah, oh, you're funny. <laughs> <laughs> Sam Raimi called me funny. And he signed it. And he drew, drew like a little evil dead little creature beside his name. That's but awesome. Nicest fucking... And, of all the celebrities I could have met, he was like probably my favorite. The the guy that would be at the top of my list, and he was nice, and he probably shouldn't have been. That's phenomenal. Because he was the middle of filming fucking Spider Man. This is the director of a multi million dollar tent pole movie. He takes time. He's eating his cookie. Like uh, oh yeah yeah. I said I said you could tell me to go fuck off while I so I could eat my cookie. That that was the exact <laughs> quote. And he had like a little cookie. He was eating it. But anyway. <sighs> Uh, so interview. That's awesome, man. That's a great story. It's That's one of my story. favorite celebrity stories because it meant so much. Man, I love Sam Raimi growing up. So, so you could tell me watching this film. Part it, it tickled a part of me that was like really deep, like, right. like the Evil Dead franchise, or whatever. But this movie, it was rewritten probably dozens of times. Um, Scott Derrickson, the original director, changed his original vision was to be. A straight up horror, horror movie. film. That's what I heard too back in the day. Like he he cited like The Witch, mm-hmm. uh, Mr. Edgar's mm-hmm. uh, film, who we just reviewed last week, um, The Northman. And, and you know, there's rumors that okay, they it was that was a step too far, and Marvel didn't want to be so terrifying, whatever. Sure. I think for I think Sam, if Sam Raimi's a consolation prize, that's hell the of a best. consolation prize. Yeah, <laughs> that's the best possible fit. Because the guy knows how to entertain the masses, totally. right? 
The one downside is he does have, and it's part of all of his work, there's a little smattering of of uh, camp. Yeah. Right? But, so, I mean, it's Marvel. I don't mind a little camp. Like, no, I feel no, like and that's I didn't what mind it kind of needed. I didn't mind it for this, too. And I'm wondering if some of the the little bit of the campiness that was in there is part of the pe- reason people are railing against it. You think like so? It, because it didn't go. It was scary, but it didn't go. You know what it was? It's, it was like a, a haunted house. Like right. a, a, a fun Halloween haunted house. Yeah, totally. Where it's scary, but it's not like, shit your pants, I'm going to have nightmares, right? It's it's probably the most comic booky of Marvel movies in, in terms of the source material. Like, with the big giant eye monster, the yeah. weird shit. Zombie yeah. Strange, like Zombie Strange, was pretty dope. I I did like that part. That that was that was pretty great. Great, like who says he has to be living? I was like, oh shit! <laughs> and then like the crazy like de- the my whole thing was they didn't really explain. I felt like they didn't really explain the whole like demons coming to like drag him back to hell thing. Like when. I just didn't really understand that. They just seemed kind of out of left field. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Like the the black demons that were like coming out, and then he like grabs them and uses them as as like wings and shit. That was what, that was, was pretty cool. What remind me? And I'm honestly I'm trying to remember. Is it because he was trying to possess himself? He was a, trying to possess a dead version of yeah. Strange. Well, I think it was because like the dead aren't supposed to be living. You know what I mean? Like undead is like. If you bring someone back to life, the demons try and come and take them, drag them back to hell sort of thing. You want to summarize? Is is that an easy task? <laughs> How would you summarize? Uh, I'll do I'll do a quick summary, right? A multiversal traveler shows up in Doctor Strange's universe. She's being pursued by by this monster that's her trying to steal. Her name's America Chavez. America Chavez. Mm-hmm. She, her name in the in the comics, I guess, is Miss America. Um, is it? That's what that's what Andrea looked up. She's her name's oh, Miss God. America. Yeah, pretty okay. bad, right? Oof. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I thought that was pretty fucking funny. Anyway, so glad they dropped so, that. Uh, America Chavez, she can tra- she can traverse through you know between the different universes. She, so in every other universe, there's like a million Doctor Strangers, there's a million Wandas, there's a million ones where Wanda's kids are there. You know, million this, a million that. They're all different. There's one America Chavez in all the multiverse, which I thought was a pretty cool little twist, right? Mm-hmm. Anyways, she's being pursued by this demon that's trying to steal her steal her powers. You don't know why. She shows up, finds Doctor Strange, uh, who she shows up with another a dead Doctor Strange from another from another dimension. Yeah, the and movie opens with a version of Doctor Strange helping her try to get this book that allows any power they need at that particular time to to vanquish their enemy. And then at the last moment she's captured and he realizes well the only way to stop this evil from getting her power is to kill her. He proceeds to try to do that but he is killed by this evil creature. She and him his lifeless body are yeah. flung into our universe. This Doctor Strange shows up, meets her, she he, and he's like she explains what's going on. He's like, "Oh, I think that's witchcraft, not not uh, sorcery." So he's like, "Oh, I'm gonna go talk to Wanda because Wanda, you know, knows all about witchcraft." He goes and talks to Wanda. Uh, she seems chill. She seems like she's doing doing okay, trimming her trees and stuff. Uh, but no, she is, uh, you know, raving psychopath, like bent on the destruction of the multiverse, just so she can find her. Uh, go and live with her kids in in another in another universe. She's a full scarlet witch, badass, crazy psycho, and she goes and kills all the fucking sorcerers at at Comertage and in order to escape her, uh America opens a portal and slams them through tons of different universes, her and Strange till they get to I don't know what was it? Uh universe 8 five two or some Something shit like, like that. that but just to quickly add wanda is possibly being influenced by the dark hole yeah the, the book that that she stuck that she took from agatha harkness in wandavision 
Right. And it may be corrupting her mind. Like, Well, it is corrupting her mind because anyone who uses the the, the Darkhold becomes a demon. Like, they, they turn bad. That's just the way it is. Right. And um, she's doing this thing called dream walking, which is very similar, I was thinking, to everything, everywhere, all at once, where she uh, yes. she can go and go into another uh, another Wanda's mind in a different universe. Let's put a pin use, in that because that was that's something I want to yeah talk and about and then later. use and then like use her powers in this other universe and just fuck everything up, right? Uh, you know, you see Reed Richards, which was fucking awesome. Uh, everyone, the whole goddamn whole damn theater erupted when Reed Richards showed up, played by John. John Krasinski, right? Yeah, like, John like Krasinski. Guy. Yeah, and, and and fans have been wanting for years that he's been like the pick. To yeah, be, exactly, exactly. Yeah. And then they had Monica Rambo as as Captain Marvel, the bad sorcerer in the first um, Doctor Strange movie. He's like a good. He's like the good one now. Like he was like he's actually the good sorcerer in this. In this universe, Mordo or Mo- Mordo, yeah, Mordo, Mordo I yeah, think yeah. it is. Captain Carter was one of them. The fucking love Captain Carter, dude. She was dope. She was fucking dope. She looked smoking, dude. She was smoking as Captain Carter, dude. I was like, you're badass. And I was reading something that it probably wasn't the Captain Carter that we saw in What If either, because it, she had like a little jet pack. And... But it's also a completely different universe, right? Right. I mean, it's a crazy. It's a fucking crazy ass weird universe. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. Yeah. Like it was, it was really neat. Like I kind of liked it. I was like, man, I wish we had, you know, plants growing all over our buildings like that. And a t- Tooney Fork man, I'm not that familiar with Black him, Bolt. But- Black Bolt. Yes. Black Bolt, who's fucking bad. It was played by Anson Mount. He's from Inhumans. Yeah. But the you know P.S. de Resistance was Doctor Charles Xavier, not just any Doctor Charles Xavier. Mm-hmm. But the 97 cartoon Dr. Charles Xavier with the floating yellow wheelchair doing the same sort of like the same mental thing where he puts his fingers to his head and you see the like the circles the, the, the come wings. out. I was yeah, like, God yeah. damn, dude, this is so fucking perfect. <laughs> wait, wait. Now, as a, as a little sidebar, but related, your criticism for Spider-Man No Way Home was it didn't really surprise you. Do you feel like this one surprised you like i mean cl- not clear really. fan service but not really i mean it didn't really surprise me i didn't know who we were gonna get mm-hmm. i knew we were gonna get someone that wasn't like absolutely predicted right and yeah. that came in the form of reed richards and i kind of knew we were probably gonna get someone from what if i did like monica rambo captain marvel that was that was kind of cool i just i really wanted someone else they fucking trolled the shit out of everyone with, the Tony with that Stark fucking thing. Tony with the fucking yeah. Tom Cruise Iron Man that was shit was everywhere and he was not in the movie yeah he's nowhere to be seen <laughs> now some people are, are citing it as just I don't know some people fucking hate rainbows they, they're a uh, shameless fan service it's part of the criticism of the film and yeah, it's fan service, but it's it's also setting up. What's wrong with fan service? Yeah, but it's, it's, and, it's and, and but it's more than fan service. Like it's setting up the bringing in all these other fucking movies. Yeah, and there's these and they, characters that will probably be in some form, may not be in the film. Like what if may continue Peggy Carter's story animated, right. but it's still it's not like hey, look in the background. Hey, I'm me. Look, look, Deadpool's here. Yeah. And he just walks away or whatever. I was surprised Deadpool didn't show up. That was another and thing. And I, I, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I would have. I, I wanted to see Deadpool. I wanted to see Tony, uh, Tom Cruise, Tony. I wonder if they actually did shoot it, and they just cut it out. Because I thought that's the that's the rumors I heard. Like, weren't they talking about spotted on set and Tom Cruise wearing this? And or was it maybe that was just bullshit they put out? I, I wanted to see the Tom Cruise thing because I thought that would have been fun. Anyway, but Doctor Strange, yeah. <laughs> basically, big fight, he saves the day, yeah. right? He saves America Chavez from Scarlet Witch. Scarlet Witch, uh, the way they turn her from evil is Chavez basically gives her what she wants instead of just trying to pound her because Chavez realizes at the end, oh, I have power, I can fight too. Yeah. 
but she sends her to her uh, alternate universe or opens a portal, which is cool. I like how her portals are stars. Yeah. And she's got the star in her on mm-hmm. the back of her jacket. I really dug that detail. But Scarlet Witch scares the shit out of her kids. And is, as you would, if you just appear from a tear in reality, you know, you're wearing red and <laughs> looking fucking evil. And the her version of her in that universe who she's been controlling, like she attacks her. Yeah. Like throws her around the kitchen and the kids are really like, oh my God, help us. And at that moment she realizes, what have I done? You know, I'm like, you know, this is going to work. Cause initially well, she yeah. was like, well, well, well if, point- if, if, if my kids, I can like have an infinite supply of kids. Right. Or, Oh, if I, what happens if, what happens if your kid gets sick? He, and they say, well, in there's, like in the infinite multiverse, there's a cure for every disease. Right. And, and then he also has to like, what happens, what happens to the Wanda in the universe that you go to? And I right. can't remember what he, what she responded to that. I think it was a uh, tough titty said the kitty. <laughs> Basically. Was the line. <laughs> it essentially boiled down to that. Yeah. So, but yeah, she, she redeemed herself at the end by destroying the dark hold in every universe. Mm-hmm. So it can never do this again. And, the temple, there's a temple, yes, and she brings the temple down on her. And it's her and temple. Like, it's, it's like, she's it's prophesied a temple to her. Yeah, to she's be... prophesied, yeah, to either destroy the, the multiverse or to, to rule the multiverse. Yeah, see, I will say, I, 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 I do think that it was kind of all over the place. That was kind of what one of the criticisms I heard. And I don't really see how we're moving into the next chapter too much. I I mean, I'm not going to lie. I wish we had a little bit more interaction with the what if situation. I wish we had a little bit more interaction with Loki. And, and I kind of had a, had a feeling it wasn't going to be as grand as everyone was expecting it to be. Mainly because it was only two hours and 17 minutes, which is long for a movie, right? But mm-hmm. short for an epic Marvel, I mean, epic Marvel movie. I mean, Spider-Man, what was three hours, right? Wasn't Spider-Man right, right. around three hours? Uh, Endgame was three hours. All the really intricate ones, they're pushing three hours. My, my two major criticisms, I think you hit on it. First was Wanda's character, even though I did watch WandaVision, it made complete sense to me. It took me a minute to recalibrate the fact that she's this villain, this yeah. big bad. And annoyed. because they went right into that the Camertage fight, and I was right. still kind of reeling from the oh, she's the villain. In because this? you 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 spent time with this character for WandaVision, completely sympathizing with it. You yeah, know she's and she felt sorry and yeah. repentant about it. And then and now she just next time give we a see her, anymore. she's like the this evil, ultimate evil. Like, yeah. And, but I think this is because here's a, a detail from the San Raimi interview. This movie was supposed to come out originally when it was conceived before WandaVision, before Low Key. They had to recalibrate things, right? Because of the shuffling schedule and then COVID and whatnot. They were filming as they were writing, which is Oof. the recipe for disaster, dude. Yeah. And once I read that in the interview, I'm like, nah, it makes sense. Because it felt very, it felt like a whole bunch of scenes, really yeah. cool shit from various drafts. Yeah. It stitched together. And Wanda as the villain, now it, it makes sense. Because for me, it off. didn't. It didn't, it didn't, like, there was no, there was no, like, uh, nothing to hook you into the fact that now she's a villain. You know what I mean? Like, I needed something to make me think, oh, yeah, of course she's the fucking well, it villain. Well, was, it was neat and tidy. Like, you set up with Loki the idea of multiple universes or whatever. And we know that there's been this huge shift with, uh, what's the, what's the villain they reveal at the end? I forget. The well, they don't movie. actually call him. He's case King, the conqueror, basically. Yeah. That's but they don't actually be. call him that. That's right. the whole thing. But it felt like this movie would have been an opportunity to, to bring that into. Yes. Yeah. To explore And that's what that. I'm saying. And that's what I'm saying was I was super, I, I was expecting Kang the Conqueror to be the bad guy in the movie. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or at least be introduced as the bad guy in the movie because we didn't get introduced to him as the bad guy in, in, in Loki. 
Mm-hmm. They just showed him and then everything happens and then he goes back to the, you know, the TVA or whatever it is. And now everything's changed and they're all worshiping him and not the. I mean, the, not the to rewrite robots. the movie on the spot, but what if you took out America Chavez, which I thought she was fine as a character. Mm-hmm. But if you just replace her character with Loki, mm-hmm. who has the ability to traverse different, which is establishing the show. Well, and is it? Lo- is it? Well, well he, he wasn't able to traverse different multi universes. He uh, he was never he had never had that ability. He well, only well, had the ability to traverse different time periods because there was no multiverse until he fucked everything or she right. fucked so everything up. Once, once he fucked everything up, then set T that up in the beginning of this. Sure, this yeah, movie. yeah, yeah. Uh, he's, he's he, found, can, he found he can a travel, way. He can travel right. through different multiverses because of whatever the fuck. Yeah, I mean, exactly. the, the, America Chavez, this brand new character who's they invented and has this power. So why the fuck not? I just felt like a team up movie with Loki and Doctor it, Strange. It was right there. Going right there. through these multiple universes would have been fucking phenomenal. Dude. Yeah, totally. Like, and the, these are characters I care about. There's a villain you've already kind of set up. Exactly, and so, he's already set up, and you can still have Wanda as the villain in some in some capacity. I would right? end with but, her as a villain. Like, we lead up to her maybe becoming the villain. Yeah, that. the something happens that pushes her over the edge and takes us into us believing right. the fact. But, like, I just didn't... I didn't feel like she could be the villain yet. It just like, felt it just, jarring. Like, there was a yeah. real missing, right? Yeah. Like in yeah, where we last was, left her and where she's at now, and I felt like the dark hole possessing you was kind of a bit of a cop out. Like, oh, this is why we we need a villain. This is why I get it, but I don't know, man. After following her for several films, really being on her side, knowing her suffering, and it's okay to have a villain that you sympathize with, but for this, it just felt a little forced. I agree. It would have been good to sympathize with her, right? But Mm -hmm. we gotta, we got to kind of understand why she's doing it. Even Thanos, you kind of understand his logic. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? You, it's, it's a very, it's a logical point. It's fucking, you know, heartless, but. You can see how someone could come to that idea. Well, if... well even well, it's it's. I felt like she learned a lesson at the end of WandaVision. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, she, she where, realized, the, where was the lesson all of a sudden? Yeah, and then suddenly know? she's gonna search for this book to s- steal children from. First, you have to have the idea, right? Yeah. Before the dark hold, you even grasp it. You have the idea that you're gonna do this. Yep. Which is fucked up, <laughs> right? And where we left you, I thought you learned your lesson because you basically enslaved a town yeah. and controlled everyone's minds. And I'm with you because at the end, you realize, okay, this is wrong. But then the next time I see you, you found the Nep- Necronomicon, essentially, or the Book of the Dead or the yeah. Darkhold, and now you're going to tear a hole through reality. And I don't know. It felt, it felt a little much. But once I, I got did. over that, I'm like, all right, this is what the movie's going to be. Yeah. Let's roll with it. Once we were done with the Comertage fight, I was like, okay, let's just let's right. just get going. I want to see what happens. Speaking of right after the Comertage fight, dude, when they're flying between the different through the different universes, that shit was dope. That's that my favorite shit, part of the was, movie. Yeah. And that leads to my other <laughs> criticism. I wanted the movie to be more of that. I yeah. feel like and and, yes. and, I, and uh, to what you said, it's only two hours, but I f- I wish they had figured out if you could have gone through like three or four more different realities. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't have exactly. to be a multitude, but just that's, they were animated in one, yeah. one moment and it was Dude, just. Dude, were we paint in one universe? Yeah, right. Like, that was pretty fucking cool. And that was, that was a ball tease. And then yeah. that quick montage, they landed in this one universe and pretty much stayed there. Which until was they went extremely into extremely the... disappointing. Until yeah. they went back to their universe, and it was just like, really, like that's all we get, like yeah. one other universe, and like just little snips of others. Like that's, I thought that was fucking pretty whack. That's and that is what I liked least about the movie. Mm-hmm. That is my biggest gripe, is that stuff. Mm-hmm. The the story and everything, like I can, it, it it was fine. You know what I mean. I can get over the fact that Wanda is the bad guy, even though it's kind of shoehorned in there. Right, right. But the fact that you we have a fucking 
uh, you know, universe traversing mutant or person, super powered person, and we only get to go to one other universe. Right. That's a fucking bunch of bullshit. What's well, called multiverse of madness. And you only went to one other fucking universe. Well, okay, so there's his home universe. Then he went through a flip book of all these cool universes where right. they were falling, landed in this one where they spent most of the second act, right? So it's really only two different universes. It's that one and then the one where Evil Strange was still alive and he fucked everything up and the world was all destitute. Oh yeah, I forgot about that one. And that was that was after there was a convergence. So that's the whole thing. When when she dream walks and she can fuck up by by doing stuff in that other universe, she can fuck up that universe to the point where it's just completely destroyed and that happened in one in one of the universes. It was and, it was it wasn't her. It was that strange that did it, right? Yeah, right. Because that was th- because that was one thing that the Illuminati said was we you know through all our time dealing with multiverses, we've realized that Wanda is not the biggest threat to the multiverse. It's you, Doctor Strange. And I was like, oh shit, like that. That's oh. another thing that they didn't really explain much, which I was, a li- you know what I mean? Like, I felt like we should have gotten a little bit more of that. Like, why didn't we know more about why he, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I felt like it did- we didn't really get what I felt like we should have gotten. Yeah, the promise of the film up until the point where they fell through all those universes. Like, that was so such an exciting sequence. Yeah. Like, I was like, fuck. And I saw it in 3D. Oh, it was, a, it was actually pretty fucking cool to see it in three. I bet another criticism I have, and this is less, this is a less of an intricate one. It's just, mm-hmm. it's fucking bad, dude. The movie has the first ending, which I think, um, his buddy, um, what's the real source of Supreme because strange isn't. Oh, w- Sorcerer- Wong. Wong, Wong. He's like, you sure you're okay? You know, using the dark holes, like, no, no, I'm fine. And they cut to him walking out of his building. He's like, ah! Well, he starts screaming at the third eye, which is some yeah. really horrible fucking CG animation. Yeah. I don't know about you. It looked terrible. What I'm the like, fuck? Okay. Well, that's kind of cool. That's promising. Then I'm waiting for that after the, you know, the mid credits. Then they show him again, perfectly fine. And then what's the big cameo? Charlie Theron. Oh, so yeah. I, what was that? I like, looked it up. You know, Dormammu? From yeah. the first Strange yeah. film, she's his niece. Oh. Some kind of weird connection, but she's a sorcerer too. Okay. And I think in the comics they wind up that should get married at some point. So. Oh, really? Interesting. But she's all like, "Oh, if you created a convergence, you need to fix this. Coming with or whatever." He's like, "Yeah," or whatever. And and she said something like, "Are you ready for this?" And his third eye opens mm-hmm. again with really shitty CGI. So that first ending was nothing, right? Right. Because you set it up like, holy fuck, like he's got a third eye. What does this mean for Strange? Apparently it means nothing because a minute later you show him perfectly fine. Right. You know, if that third eye could have winked, it would have. <laughs> like, ding! Like, and I saw that, I'm like, that's fucking awful, dude. Yeah. That is fucking awful. Yeah, it was. And I, it, I'm sorry, it's Sam Raimi, and you know, movie has a lot of great parts, and that doesn't really meet, move the needle. You know, you could take it or leave it, but it's it's a wonder that they left that in like that. No one saw how awful that is tone wise. So yeah, what was the point of him screaming third eye? Leave it at that. Yeah, like okay, what is what are the implications of that? Is he like part or, evil or, now, or or better yet? have that happen while he's after she comes and gets him right Mm -hmm. and then she comes and gets him he's about to go off and then he screams yes happens right right and then and then she like she gets like a you know maybe she gets in like a fighting stance and that's when you cut away yes that makes sense like and then because it 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 raises it it adds stakes to it it matters and what about the very last one? You know, uh, you know, we, we you wait you wait ten minutes to get through all the damn credits. Oh, I love five that. Million people. <laughs> it's it's over. It's over. <laughs> and then it got, I'm like, you motherfucker. Bruce, oh yes, there's a Bruce Campbell cameo. 
in the universe that they land in, the one they're in most of the time in the movie, what he's like a dick, a hot dog vendor, and strange, like cast a spell to have him repeatedly punch himself. <laughs> and she's like, Oh, is that gonna like wear off? He's like, Yeah. She's like, How long? Like an hour or so? He's like, ah, Three weeks. <laughs> and then the very last clip at the very end, like he's like, Oh, oh, oh. Like he looks around and then he looks straight down the barrel of the camera and he goes, it's over. <laughs> and then it cuts to black. I'm yeah. like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> the, the running joke there though, is that Sam Raimi famously loves to torture Bruce Campbell. And it was also a nod to evil dead. The famous ash scene where he's fucking beating the shit out of himself. Strange had a nice element of, uh, of horror. Like I said before, you yeah. got Sam Raimi. It's, it's horror, but it doesn't go too far. Whereas, it was, but it was actually the part where she fucking killed the Illuminati was, I was like, God damn. Dude, the way she killed Black Bolt was nuts. Reed Richards, like, you, you know, this guy, he can open his mouth and whisper and, and, you know, destroy. He's like, what mouth? What mouth? And pulled a fucking, like, uh, uh Agent Smith for yeah. the Matrix. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, mm, 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 mm. and then his whole head, his head didn't blow up. It, it like, just deflated, just like, like incate, con- concave, like yeah, it completely imploded. She cut Captain Carter in half with her shield. That shit was dope. She turned Reed Richards into a fucking spaghetti or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Like put him through a cheese grater. <laughs> like, <I> was- <laughs> Monica Rambo, Captain Marvel. She she got crushed by a statue. It wasn't yeah, as gruesome wasn't- as the others, but oh, and then Professor X. She snapped his neck. He went balls out like. That was probably the bloodiest sequence and maybe the bloodiest of any Marvel film. I'm trying to think. Like literally Captain Carter's shield was dripping with blood. They didn't show her chopped in half and you see her fall and you hear the, and it goes straight through where she's standing. I mean, she has to be chopped in half. And the audience I saw where they were like, oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I don't think anyone knew that was going to come. Especially in a Marvel movie. But again, the horror element felt like from a dr- uh, earlier draft that there was like right. it was a frankenstein of a script i just feel yeah. like a bunch of cool ideas let's string it along and the man even said it in his Rolling stone interview literally this is how sam Reed talks literally i was filming one day and while the you know the script for the next day was being written and i'm thinking that is marvel that's the mistake studios make when they yeah. fuck their shit up like I mean, I get you have schedules and there's money involved or whatever, but it's a slippery slope. Once you don't keep your eye on the quality, like the the minute you just say, yeah, it's good enough, that good enough becomes tomorrow's perfect, right? right? And you just go down from there. So I just wish they had just given this a little bit more time to, to focus because nothing comes, nothing good comes out of creating a movie in that kind of environment. Like, I, I mean, agree. Can, can it be good? Yes. Is it hella risky and likely you'll have a mess? Yes. The thing with Charlene Theron at the end just felt was, kind of thrown in. Like, well, that's the whole who thing. is she? Okay, I guess he's going to have to go off. And yeah, What if it was like, fucking Loki that showed yeah. up? That's the whole thing. Like, like you can do now, that with Thanos. Now I'm like anticipating it, well, right? Well, you can do that shit with Thanos because he's kind of a kind of a household name if you know anything if you know the littlest bit about comics over the last 30 years you know who thanos is mm-hmm. you know what i mean i know, i mean barely anyone knows who the fuck this lady is like this felt like i just got a, a film about the multiverse and it kind of let me down a little bit yeah so am i gonna get excited about the next film about the convergence of where the fuck that is are they just gonna like Give me a little sizzle reel of the universe that I can see, and it sets up stakes in one universe. Like, I don't know, man. I wanted to absolutely love this movie. Yeah, me and too. I and I and I liked it, but didn't like love it. I think like twelve year old me would would be saying something different. Like, holy shit, Sam Raimi is so amazing, and there's tons of that. But there's just no, there's no bone underneath that meat. I think you put you put it pretty well when you said it. it seemed like a bunch of really cool scenes put together. Wanda being like as like a fucking monster, like like you know stomping through the fucking like you know Illuminati place, killing everyone was cool. You know the 
The flying through the different universes was cool. Zombie Strange was cool. You know what I mean? But See, what, there was no reason to give a shit, you know? So like I we know from what if there's a universe where zombies have overtaken. Yeah. When I saw the trailer, I'm like, holy shit, we're gonna get a zombie verse. Exactly. And it didn't exactly. happen. And I'm like, Ex- God damn it. Like, come on, man. Like may- maybe this should have been a two parter. Well, Maybe this should truth. have been part two. The reason why I was so disappointed that Wanda was the bad guy and we didn't just get a little bit of Wanda as a bad guy and she was a good guy for most was because we didn't get another bad guy. A lot of times in these movies, like in Look at Avengers, you have the bad guy, but then you have the real bad guy behind the guy behind the guy who is Thanos. You know what I mean? Like The original villain they wanted uh, was this guy called Nightmare. And I don't know anything about him. But it hmm. was not Wanda. Wanda was in it. But she wasn't the villain. And again, because of the schedule shuffling and the order of things going to come out, they had to reorder things. And that's where I think it, I think the vision of this film was lost. Right. Like, I almost kind of wish that as much as I love Sam Raimi, like I'm just curious if they had, they had stayed the course, if things what had we went a gotten. different way. In another universe, for let's say, right. we would have gotten that version of this film and maybe it would have been a little bit more cohesive or impactful. You know, you know the other thing that I found a little weird that she talked about what he did, his choice with Thanos that was brought up. a Right. Lot, right. And you know, she said a, a dude at the wedding said it, but no one said anything about what he did for no way home. For me, that's the more egregious thing. Yeah. He fucking manipulated reality and at the end he cracked the whole and I thought the movie That's was going to be the exactly. was going to be exactly. the remnants was was the aftermath of that. Like well, duh, and, and that makes more what they sense said. because yes, and he is a danger and then you follow that thread naturally. He fucking he should have never done it. He ruined lies by doing it. He fixed well, it. But did he really fix it? There's a yeah, there's but, a tear, right? Like, but technically, um, he doesn't remember doing any of that. Well, all the more better reason to remind him. They could have reminded him in the Illuminati scene. Yeah, totally. Like we've been tracking your universe. You, do you know you did this? Yeah. Like, what? I didn't know I do didn't. that. I didn't yes, you do did. That. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And this, and then you know what that does? It puts this whole predicament at his feet. Yeah. Right, and absolutely, he, he's the best of the strangers, and still he fucked up, and he still and almost fuck up. caused the <laughs> the collapse of the multiverse. Right, so Zombie Strangers is cool, lots of cool sequences. So if you want to see it and see some cool shit, you will be rewarded with cool shit. And then the but, monsters, like the weird monsters in the fucking temple, the at the end, mm-hmm. like. What was even the point of those guys? Did they even, they didn't even, like, I think Doctor Strange showed up and just kind of killed them all, right? He just kind of, like, threw them all out. Yeah, Zombie Strange showed up and instantly dealt with them, pretty much. Yeah, it was And this temple has been here, I guess she's destined to be the, that's the other trope I'm tired of. The the destined one, the chosen Mm. one, the the one who's going to rule us all. Totally. That should be fucking buried. Any writer that brings puts that in a fucking script, I'm like, nope, you got to do, nope, rewrite that. <laughs> First thing to go, be clever. I'm paying you a lot of money. Be more clever than that. You're better than that. I'll make him feel good about himself. You can do better, man. You can do better, man. Come on. I mean, like I said, it was something that was enjoyable fluff, but it. it ugh. At this point, I have such high expectations. At this point, I have such high expectations of um, out out of Marvel films that it was just it was just sad to to get one that was kind of it was very mediocre. You know what I well, mean? Well, Kevin Feige and Marvel they're so competent. It's 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 not what's there. What's there works well enough that, that right. you have a fun time. Like the whole sequence with the eye monster, or whatever, and popping the eye out, like. You know, it worked. The audience loved it, right? It brushed against greatness on so many points where it could have veered off and been... Mm -hmm. um, And I think it should have been a two-part film. Like, it really should have went. And then... I don't even think they needed to do it, For the second part, like... Because it's... 
I think part of it is the multiverse is such a massive idea. The right. fact that you could, Wanda was just too small for the concept. I mm. felt like, and again, it's a whole different movie, but they set it up so beautifully with Loki. Yeah. Figure out a way, to, and they set it up so beautifully with No Way Home. Yeah. With what Strange did. It's already there. You're right. There. It's right there. Yeah. Like, you, I, I you don't, don't get need, that. You don't that need doesn't make any sense to me. Wanda can become the villain in part two. Like, have her be. And, and another part of it, we really haven't seen her as Scarlet Witch except for the very end of WandaVision. So l- allow her to be Scarlet Witch, to be the hero we, n- we know her as, and slowly, like an Anakin thing, have her be corrupted. Right, mm-hmm. the dark hold is part of this MacGuffin that they have to find, and and she's getting ideas. We hear seducing her, and and then suddenly at the end, you know, it's the Thanos moment, right, with the gauntlet. Like Star Lord, shut your fucking mouth. We almost yeah. have it, right? And then she she gets influenced at the wrong moment and undoes. There's the opportunity, and the fucking hinges blow off the universe, and that leads to part two. And then it, she is now the central threat, right? But we've gone on this journey with her. We've earned that. We've led up to it in anticipation. I was expecting them to set up a lot more stuff. Like they showed yeah. people, but they didn't do this. They didn't set anything up. Like it didn't set up like mutants coming into our universe. It didn't. How s- about a reality where vampires are a muck? Yeah. That sets up Blade. You don't even have to show exactly. Blade. You exactly. Just, you spend 15 minutes in it, and the, the fight, it's like a, everything everywhere all at once. Although con- conceptually it wasn't quite the same, you stole the the power and it brought it to your universe. Right. But it did a great job in showing all these different versions, these different yeah. realities. And one of our criticisms for that was it'd be nice if the payoff, the fight, involved going from universe to universe. My yeah. feeling is the same with this movie. Yeah. The multi that cool little sequence where they fell through, build that shit into the 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 end finale because yeah. it's called multiverse. So, you know they're they're falling, fighting through the different multiverses and these realities, and you, you could have gotten peaks at all different types of realities that could pay yeah. off later. It yeah, was just, fan service, but it would have been fucking epic if they did. But it's not even a matter of being fan service. Like it's like you said, it's called the multiverse of madness. Right. And if you, it's not fan service to give people something that it's they're in the title. somewhat expecting <laughs> from the fucking title, dude. Right, right. Jesus. If you have like, Top Gun the more and there's no fucking it, flying planes. Yeah, right. <laughs> the more we talk about it, the more it infuriates me, actually, to tell you the truth. The, like, the more annoyed I am with the movie. It's kind of funny. Yeah, I don't I don't know where my love for Sam Raimi, how much that influences my decision. Because I love that director so much. I love his works. Because the Sam Raimi... Well, you can't put it all on him. No, like, no, no. I'm like, not. I'm know? not putting it on him. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. saying that's what makes me like the movie. Right. The right. fact that it has a Raimi touch. If it was directed by someone else, some yeah fucking no name or whatever, I might be even more brutal with it. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. It's just it's, it has a fun factor. Yeah. It's just it's the expectations. It could have been so much more, so much better. Well, it, it just feel, it feels like a huge miss, in my opinion. Well, tell you the truth, like the the Illuminati shit feels just because there it it didn't lead into anything. It that the Illuminati stuff feels like just like fan service, and it it wouldn't be. It didn't have to be just fan service. It could have had an actual important played an important role in moving the overarching story of this phase forward, but Dude, it didn't. You know who would have been a better villain? Fucking Doctor Strange. Yeah. If the movie was what the trailer suggested the movie was going to be, it would have been a better fucking right. movie. And I thought that <laughs> when lo- watching trail, I'm thinking, yes, there's consequences. Consequences yep. where he did in No Way Home. But yeah, how awesome would that have been? You realize midway through the movie that it's actually another strange you have to yeah. fight yourself they've already teed this up in what if and it was an incredible ep- episode it was great. absolutely it was one of the better episodes and then he gets the backstory with the illuminati you know you don't have to change much like you are a threat right in there. every universe yeah so what do you do put yourself in stranger's shoes you're a threat in every universe so 
How do you prove? Do you how do you prove that you're not a threat? And are you really fooling yourself? Because you know you, <laughs> and you know that there's something in you that will have you push. Like she said, you you have to hold the scalpel. That was what his. What oh Rachel yeah, said, you always right? have to make the cut. Which I thought was a great line, right? Like he, he's he's kind of like Tony Stark in that regard, where he's extremely brilliant, but can be short sighted. So fucking arrogant. Right, arrogance, and I got the tools, I got the talent. Let's fucking do it. Okay, let's give our reviews. I'm gonna give it mine, and no, I mean if you've if you've been watch if you've been watching if you've been listening to this podcast. You're gonna. You might have an inkling of what I'll give. I'm giving it three and a half. Three and a half. Uh, Reed Richard spaghetti noodles out of uh, out of five. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, because it was fun and it was entertaining, it it you know it it gets the same it gets the same uh, the same rating as Sonic Two. <laughs> Take that. <All> right. <laughs> Because they were both fun and they're both fl- fluff movies, you know? Anyways, I'll give it a uh, three and a half uh, zombie strange dicks out of five. Of zombie those. strange dicks? Was there? Was his penis in the movie? If it's if it's on his body, it was in the movie. And but that's like so out of left field, dude. Just like, you okay, just have zo- to just talk zombie, about penises? Three and a like, half Jesus zombie Christ, strange man, you're fucking weirdo. pinkies. How about that? <laughs> Uh, I assume okay. they were less, it, it, you okay. know, it decomposed and fell off. But well, I'm just saying, man. Like, you I'm know, just you trying to be edgy for a million here. different things I that were to... actually shown in the movie. Let's play a fun. <laughs> let's play a fun drinking game, fans. Like, um, how many times have I talked about genitalia in the first ten episodes? I feel like I've done yeah. it a lot. It's my go-to: balls, penis, my my uh, humors, right there in the commode. Yep. Yep. Like a twelve year old boy. I know. But yeah, I you know, and and Raimi gives it half a star. So three and a half. I mm. w- I would give it three, but Raimi the Raimiism boosted a little bit. But it is a, a flawed fun time. Yeah, very flawed. Very flawed, but but fun. And and you know and that's why I can't give it anything lower, because I enjoyed it. But I just felt like it could have been so much. I mean, shit. Well, I, literally, like you and me, just a couple of schmucks, you know, failed whatever we are. Like, you know, talking about, you know, we're a couple of never was is like, you know, we right, came get, up with we, a better idea. I get it, Mike. I get it, Mike. <laughs> you know, yeah, I'm right in. there with you, buddy. Okay? Guys that will never us. achieve anything just take um, a grain of salt. <laughs> Two <laughs> losers. <laughs> Did I mention we're bald? Oh, wait, it's in the title. <laughs> Two assholes comp- completely devoid of any usefulness. Um, you know, came up with a, you know, a better, you know, a better backbone to the movie. Yes, we did. In, you we know, did. like in, in, in an hour. But people do. Li- I mean, a few people listen to our episodes. Hey, in a know? in a universe we're wildly popular. Yeah, that we're, is, we're that number is one trending truth. on uh, iTunes. So, well, in, and then to, in to that universe, universe of fans, thank you. In another universe, <laughs> we made Doctor Strange: The Multiverse of Madness, <laughs> and it was the best fucking Marvel movie ever. Oh wow! Can I go live there? Where is America Chavez when you need her? Open up a big ass star behind me right now. <laughs>